this entitled mother tries to emotionally manipulate a store employee to try and get a discount. However, this employee has a secret that makes it impossible for them to be manipulated. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. I used to work at a local grocery chain in my area for about seven years total. Started in high school and worked there throughout college. By the end, I was probably the most recognizable employee there. Managers started deferring to me on most issues because I knew how to handle most people and really only called them up front if I needed their key. Sadly, not really. I decided to get another job. You know, the kind that isn't soul crushing and pays what you're worth. Sadly, this meant leaving some of my favorite customers one of which is a boy named James. I've watched James grow up over the years, but he's always been this little dorky kid who talks to me about Minecraft every time he goes with his mum. James actually made me a card when I told him I had to leave in two weeks. It had all the Minecraft monsters on it, waving goodbye. That was about a year ago. On to two weeks ago. I'm finishing up my shift at my new job, which has been great. I decided to fix dinner for my family and my old store was on the way. I stopped by, said hi to some old co-workers and started shopping. I'm staring out the dairy section. When I feel this tug on my jacket, I turn and sure enough, it's my little buddy James. He starts asking about my new job and if I'm coming back and then immediately goes into his splurge about Minecraft. I listen and talk for maybe a minute at most before his mum walks up to us and takes James away. Before he leaves, I give him a fist bump and tell him I'll see him later. I go back to my browsing of the finest cheeses. Before another tug on my jacket, I turn, expecting James and see this little boy instead. Hello, can I help you? Hi. Hey buddy, it's my go-to if I don't remember someone's name. What are you doing? Shopping with my mom. Entitled mom from here on. Cool man. Hey, I'm really sorry, but I have to hurry. Maybe you should go back to your mom. That way you don't get lost. It's happened before. We had a father lose his daughter in the store and we shut it down to find her. Kid was hiding in grapefruit the entire time. The kid nods and goes on his way. I wrap up shopping and decide to pick out some beer as a treat to myself. I'm trying to decide between a stout or porter. When I hear a clearing throat, I immediately move out of the way, thinking I was in the way of someone, and realize it's the entitled mother. Why didn't you want to talk with my son? Pardon? My son said you told him to go away after he said hi to you. He hasn't seen you in so long, he wanted to say hi. I'm sorry ma'am, but I have to get going and didn't really have time to talk. She gives a disdainful, mm-hmm. Do you even remember his name? Nope. Honestly, I can count on two hands how many names I remember of my customers. Sorry, but I don't. You were talking to that other boy for a while. I'm sure you know his name. But why don't you remember my son? Ma'am, I used to meet a couple hundred people a day. I can't remember everyone. Well, you hurt his feelings. The entire time, this kid looks like he wants to crawl into a hole and die from embarrassment. I'm sorry they got hurt, but I've got to go now. I grab a six pack of brown ales instead because local craft beer is amazing. I go to put it in my cart and she snatched it out of my hands. You shouldn't get this for being so rude to my son. Excuse me? You're being so rude to me and my son. You shouldn't be getting rewarded with beer. You're probably not old enough to purchase anyways. Now truth be known, I remember the mum plenty. She was a frequent difficult customer to the point that the office staff would draw straws to deal with her. She's entitled, argumentative and made my life as a cashier more irritating than needed. I open the cooler and take another six pack, colder too, and place it in my cart. She reaches for it and I move her hand out of the way. Don't you dare freaking touch me. Don't take stuff out of my cart. You can't talk to me like that. I'm a customer. So am I. And guess what? You're also an obnoxious human being. I don't know if it makes you feel high and mighty to talk down to people, but you're no better than the rest of us. I've been polite this entire exchange, but frankly, my limit for bullcrap has been reached. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to check out. She fish gapes for a minute and I take the time to unload my groceries on the conveyor belt. It's a new girl and she's going a little slow. I'm calming down because I hate snapping on people in public. Eventually, Entitled Mum shows up right behind me. Call your manager. Me and the girl turn like, what? Call her now. My old boss shows up pretty quickly, almost sighing, seeing the Entitled Mum. Your employee was extremely rude to me and my son. They would 
wouldn't even acknowledge him when he said hi to them. I want them disciplined. My old boss turns to the new employee and says that they'll have a meeting later. No, not her, idiot. Him. She then points to me. Hi, old boss. Is this a prank? I wish. I want him written up and I want a discount for having been treated so poorly. Well, he doesn't. Ma'am, I'd like you to kindly get lost. Clearly, I never made an impact on you. You would have realized I haven't been working here in a year. If you weren't so self-absorbed thinking your crap didn't stink, then maybe you'd learn how to act around others. I feel sorry for your family if this is your personality. Or is it just out in public that you bear your butt? You don't get to speak to me like that. I'm a paying customer. As am I. Ma'am, don't raise your voice, please. The entire mom starts a rant, which ended in a threat to sue me for slander. Honestly, I couldn't be bothered to listen to it. The poor cashier stood there with the widest eyes I'd ever seen. The ones that say, please let this be a once in a lifetime moment. I paid, gave my old boss a hug and left. There's no big comeuppance, no justice. It's just an entitled mum who wasn't happy I didn't remember her son. Lord, help that poor child as he gets older. So I'm in my early 20s and work part-time retail at a beauty supply store to supplement my disability income. I just went through a nine month long battle with a very aggressive form of leukemia, which for any who aren't familiar with is a blood cancer. In 2013, including daily infusions of arsenic and chemotherapy, and even though there isn't a cure, it can be controlled with oral chemos now that I'm past the first year, but I'll be weakened and immune is compromised for many years, if not the rest of my life. Life, and will probably have to be on these medicines for the rest of my life as well. Earlier today, I had a lady come in and just by the look of her and how she acted, you could tell she was going to be self-entitled and somewhat rude at best. She was overly tan with bleach blonde hair, super long bright pink acrylics, Chanel bag and drove a Mercedes. She goes directly for our selection of hair extensions and browses for a few minutes. She was talking loudly on her cell phone the whole time and didn't even acknowledge my greeting as she entered the store. She then starts snapping her fingers at me to get my attention. Snapping her fingers like I'm a dog. I guess she wouldn't be bothered to tear herself away from her riveting conversation about why her friend's co-worker's boyfriend was having lunch with another woman to speak to me like a human. I walk over to her and politely ask what she needs help with. She wants me to unlock all of our hair so she can browse as she liked. We keep it locked because a lot of it is over $100 and is a high theft item. I told her I wasn't allowed to do that, but if there was any color that she wanted to look at, I would be happy to unlock it for her. And we also have a ring of full length swatches she is welcome to look at. She starts huffing and giving me dirty looks. How dare I tell her no, as per our company policy. Don't I know who her husband is? Eventually she settles on one of our priciest sets of 100% human hair clip-ins. Before I ring her up, I let her know that all of our hair is absolutely not returnable or exchangeable for any reason. Once she walks out the door, she says fine, and I ring her up and tell her the final price plus tax, close to $200. She goes ballistic. But my daughter may have cancer, so I should get a discount. So you're buying extensions for your daughter because she may have cancer? No, they're for me, but it's very stressful having a sick child, and the cancer will be very expensive to treat if she has it. What? Ma'am, I'm very aware of how expensive cancer is but we don't offer illness discounts. If you had ever had a loved one with cancer, you'd understand. I'm a really easygoing person and usually let things like this not affect me in the slightest. Heck, I love making cancer jokes, but I hate it when people use other people's illnesses to gain sympathy and benefit. My mother had a really tough time dealing with my illness, so I know how truly heartbreaking it can be to have a sick child. I have cancer, ma'am, so I know what it's like and how devastating this type of illness can be on the body and mind. All four of my grandparents died of cancer and my stepmother is battling breast cancer for the third time and it has metastasized to her lungs, lymph nodes and brain and they're giving her less than two years. So yes, I know how it feels. If I were to give a cancer discount, it would be to the people fighting it, not people trying to gain my sympathies. That was just silence and a stunned look from her. Your total is $200. Would you like a bag? She was very sweet for the two minutes it took her to pay and leave. Even 
if it was true that her daughter really did have cancer, which, I don't know, being an EP, it's debatable. It's pretty disgusting that she would use that as an excuse to get a discount at a store, because obviously people are gonna feel bad for you. So she was just trying to emotionally manipulate her into saving money. Well, she picked on the wrong person to try and do that to. Back when I lived in California as a teenager, I would visit a bookstore in my local mall, which was called The Wicked Bookstore. It wasn't its name, but the font their sign had was a bit hard to read, and that's what I got it to. I would often go to this bookstore at least once a week to check out the manga section, and I add to or collect new stories to my collection at home. So needless to say, probably 90% of whatever money I got from babysitting and allowance was spent in this store. It also resulted in me being friending one of the employees there, who I will call Wolf. Wolf was an awesome guy and liked to help customers out in finding what they needed, and because I had a tendency to read a lot of manga and sci-fi, he would ask me on some of my recommendations when I was there. Now when I go and buy books, yes I'm dyslexic, but I love reading and use what techniques I have to improve my word memory. I would always start by reading the back summary, looking at the art, especially mangas, and then read a little bit of the book to get a feel as to whether or not I liked it. I'd then either buy the book or find something else. Now I wasn't the only regular Wolf would have in the store. There was this lady who would always show up, find a book and read before putting it on the shelf. And I mean it, she would just stay there in the store and read the book. I knew it, she knew it, and Wolf knew it. But he couldn't do anything about it since you can't prove a person is reading a whole book in a store. So I'm in the store one day, as usual, where I'm waiting for some reason, maybe meeting a friend, I don't remember, and I decide to sit down and read the newest volume from a manga series that I was collecting at the time. Wolf was fine with me doing this because he knew I was going to buy it anyways, and we're all relaxing when the lady showed up again. The woman, let's call her Mary for the sake of something different, waltzes in with this I'm better than all of you attitude and goes over to the romance section that was near me. I looked at Wolf, who just huffs in annoyance, feeling his pain. Mary in the meantime grabbed a random paperback book and proceeds to find wherever she left off last and folds the book in half. I just stare mortified because if you can't guess it, that's the worst abuse you can put a book through and it creases the spine horribly. Now if it's your own book and you do this, there's no judgement here, but Mary hadn't bought the book and nobody wants to pay for a new book that looks like it's been mistreated. Wolf of course instantly yelled at her to not do that, to which Mary just scoffed. The conversation that followed, at least to my memory, went like this. What is your problem? You're breaking the binding on our books when you do that. Please stop. Oh, calm down. It's just a book. She turned back to ignore him and continued to read. Now, I'm not sure if Wolf was having a bad day or if he just stopped giving a hoot about this lady as a customer, but he proceeded to walk around the counter and literally rip the book from her hand so that a few pages came loose. You know what? Get out. Oh, what are you? You need to leave now. Get out. I'm banning you from the store. What? Why? What did I do? I'm a paying customer. Lady, you've been coming in here for the last two years and have bought two books. Two. Otherwise, you just sit around in the store and read. We are not Barnes and Noble. We're not a library. And now you were damaging our property. Leave. It's a bookstore. I'm allowed to read the book to see if I like it. A few pages, maybe. A chapter at the most. Not the whole thing. She was fuming when she looked at me, sitting in the floor awkwardly, reading as I wasn't sure what to make of the whole thing. Well, she's reading too. Throw her out. Wolf looks at me, then back at Mary. Lady, that's one of our regulars. She's here weekly, buying books. Want to know why I'm letting her read that book? Because she's going to buy the book. Now get out. They argued for a bit longer, Mary refusing to leave, and Wolf just yelling louder and louder for her to get out. I guess in the end, Mary started to feel embarrassed because people were staring and left. Wolf didn't have the power to actually ban her from the store. So I did see her a few other times after that, but she would always blush when we made eye contact and hurry out of the store. This story is just like people who abuse the whole free sampling system and think it's a replacement for the whole thing. I don't know if she thinks she's clever, like wow they're so stupid I can just read books for free and they'll never notice. I'm sure there are people who get away with it, I mean she got away with it for two years, but do you really want to be known as that person? Every time you go in the store, people know, and surely you know they know, is not paying for 
for a book really worth the awkwardness? I'm all for a good deal when there's one available, but abusing a system to get one is just really low. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you